We're in downtown Portland at the Portland Art Museum. In fact, on the second floor in the Crumpacker Family Library. Welcome to Comcast Newsmakers, everyone. I'm Ken Ackerman. You know, 30,000 kids come to the museum every single year, thanks in part to its innovative programs. Please welcome Christina Olson. She is the Director of Education and Public Programs. Thanks for being with us. My pleasure. Now, these programs um, that you come up with, a lot of the public themselves come up with these things, the artists and the public. Tell me about Shine a Light. Uh, that's a really good point, Ken. Shine a Light is an event that happens every year in which local artists take over the museum for one fabulous night and all kinds of things happen that you'd never expect to happen in a museum. Well, last year, for example, we had two naked men wrestling in front of thousands of people, kind of in a remake of a sculpture that's in the Portland Art Museum. And you allow this? We totally allowed it. <laughs> Tell me about more about Shine a Light, some of the things that have come out of this program. Well, what Shine a Light is really about is getting people to think about the museum in new ways. And so we let the artists kind of have free reign and they come up with ideas. For example, this year there'll be a bocce tournament outside the museum. Uh -huh. There's going to be poets in small little corners of the museum that you'll happen upon. There's going to be a book that's made in front of your eyes of the event that you can actually contribute to. What do you mean you can contribute? No, tell me how that works. Well, um, we are going to let people um, take pictures with their iPhones or their smartphones or the cameras and then bring them by a certain time in the evening to a table and then those pictures will actually be produced in a book that is made, cut and bound on the spot and then delivered to the first lucky, say, 50 guests. Really? Yes. And will there be a copy of the book in the Crumpacker Family Library here? You betcha. <laughs> Tell me about um, a program you also have called Object Stories. Object Stories is a fabulous program and it's really designed to reach out to new audiences. We invite people to bring an object of their choice to the museum and we let them tell a story about it. That object could be an iPhone, it could be your pen, it could be a military medal, it could be a stuffed animal, anything that's important to you. So what you're saying is, I come to the library, I have a pen, I tell you a story about it, you're going to record this? We're going to record it and we're going to publish that story both in, inside the museum in the special gallery we have and online. And I'm sure you get interesting stories from We people. get incredible stories. We get stories about objects that have passed through the generations that people have, have held on to. We get stories about stuffed animals that people <laughs> love and still treasure. Anything uh -huh. that you can imagine, we get. You can go to the ar archive online and, re and watch those stories. All right, and what is the website address? It's www.objectstories.org. Okay. Um, what's nice about the museum is that there are certain nights where it's free admission and and certain demographic age groups get in free as well. That's a really important part of what we do here. The museum is completely free for everybody under 17. And a lot of people don't know that, but it's completely free if you're under 17. In addition to that, school tours are entirely free. So there's no cost to a school to actually bring a class here to the museum. Uh, typically, how many school groups will come through here in a year? Ken, we see school tours every day of the school year, with the exception of Monday. And when they come, they go through all the galleries, including special exhibitions. Most of the kids who come are elementary school. Uh -huh. um, fourth grade is especially popular, but we see a lot of high school tours and we see a lot of college tours. You know, when you start kids young at that age, it seems like they would have an interest and, and keep coming back. That's exactly right. You start them early and it becomes a lifelong habit. Now on a tour, where would they usually go? I, right now we're in the Crumpacker Family Library. Where, where would a tour typically go? A tour can go through any of the permanent collection galleries, so those could be the Native American collections, mm -hmm. European collections, American collections, or it could be a tour of a special exhibition that's only here for a few months. There's two and a half blocks or two and a half acres down here. What's the campus size? It, I had it right here, um, and we'll probably have two and a half block campus, and, and this is called the Portland Cultural District. That's right. And this is the cornerstone. That's right. All right. Well, we appreciate you joining us and sharing, uh, Christina, about uh, the programs. How are they funded, by the way? Object Stories has been funded by a lot of big national funders, inc okay. including the IMLS, Matt Life Foundation, Crest Foundation, Lehman Foundation, a whole host of All others. Right. When those two wrestlers come back, tell me. I don't, I don't want to be here, I don't think. But anyway, Christina, thank you very much for sharing. Thank you for being here as well. For Comcast Newsmakers, I'm Ken Ackerman. Make it a great day.